a revision video covering the main points on blood for the Irish Leaving Cert. Blood is a type of connective tissue. It has the liquid matrix plasma and suspended in this are all the blood cells. The largest component of the blood is the liquid called plasma. Plasma is mostly made up of water, however it does contain many dissolved salts and very important proteins, the most important of which are antibodies and clotting proteins. Floating or suspended in the plasma are the blood cells, the first of which are the red blood cells known as the erythrocytes. They are made in the bone marrow of your sternum, your ribs, your vertebrae, the long bones of your arms and those of your legs too. The role of red blood cells or erythrocytes is to transport gases, particularly to transport oxygen, and this is helped greatly by the fact that red blood cells all contain millions of haemoglobin molecules. It's not on your course, but it's useful to know that haemoglobin can also bind carbon dioxide, and so red blood cells do play a role in transporting carbon dioxide as well. It's also really important to know that haemoglobin has a great affinity for carbon monoxide and if it's a choice between carbon monoxide and oxygen, carbon monoxide will win. When haemoglobin binds carbon monoxide, it greatly reduces the amount of oxygen that is transported by the red blood cells. This is one of the reasons why health professionals advise you not to smoke when pregnant. Cigarette smoke contains a lot of carbon monoxide. For now, on your course, we're really only interested in how oxygen is transported. Each individual red blood cell or erythrocyte contains millions of haemoglobin molecules and this maximizes oxygen transport. When oxygen and haemoglobin come into contact, oxyhemoglobin is formed and this is a reversible reaction. If you examine the structure of haemoglobin, it gives you a better understanding of how it exactly it transports oxygen. It's made up of these four polypeptide chains and at the center of each of these chains are these structures which bind one oxygen molecule. Each individual haemoglobin molecule therefore has the potential or the ability to bind or carry four oxygen molecules. Those four heme groups capable of binding one oxygen molecule each contain the element iron and that's the reason why you need to take in iron, that trace element, in your diet. Erythrocytes are very unusual types of cells and a question that's often asked is how do they differ from other body cells? Firstly, their shape is a little bit unusual. They are biconcave, and this allows for the rapid diffusion of gases. Red blood cells have no nucleus at maturity, and this is to make room for as many haemoglobin molecules as possible. Erythrocytes or red blood cells have no mitochondria at maturity, also to make room for those haemoglobin molecules. Red blood cells are also very tiny, very small in size, and this is to enable them to fit into those tiny blood vessels, the capillaries. The next set of blood cells are the white blood cells otherwise referred to as the leukocytes. They're usually very identifiable because they have a large nucleus. They are also made in the bone marrow of the bones mentioned previously. The role of white blood cells is to fight infection. There are two groups of white blood cells. There are the monocytes and the lymphocytes. Monocytes, think of M for munchers to help you remember. They engulf and destroy pathogens or disease-causing organisms in a process known as phagocytosis. Macrophages are a type of monocyte that you will encounter very often on your Leaving Cert course. Just think of macrophages as being big munchers. Lymphocytes, these are the other group of white blood cells. And it's B lymphocytes that make antibodies. So white blood cells fight infection. There are the monocytes that do this by phagocytosis, by engulfing and destroying pathogens. And then there are the lymphocytes who fight infection by producing antibodies. The other component of the blood are the thrombocytes, otherwise referred to as the platelets. Platelets have no nucleus, in fact they are fragments of cells. And the role of the platelets or the thrombocytes is to clot the blood. Now it's on to classifying blood. The first way of classifying blood is the ABO system, which gives you your blood group. If your blood group A, it means that you have these particular A antigens on the surface of your red blood cells. Blood group B means that you have B antigens on the surface of your red blood cells. Blood group AB means that you have both A and B antigens on the surface of your red blood cells. And finally, if your blood group O, it means zero, you have no antigens on the surface of your red blood cells. So there are four possible blood groups, A, B, AB and O. The second system for classifying blood is the presence or absence of the rhesus factor on the surface of your red blood cells. If you do have the rhesus factor on the surface of your red blood cells, then you're rhesus positive. If you do not have the rhesus factor on the surface of your red blood cells, well then you're rhesus negative. 
Being A positive, for example, means that you have A antigens and the rhesus factor present on the surface of your red blood cells. If you're A negative, it means that you only have the A antigens present on the surface of your red blood cells and you do not have the rhesus factor. Knowing your blood group is really important. If you don't know your blood group, you risk introducing foreign antigens into your body. If you introduce foreign antigens, antigens that are new to your system, well then this will trigger an immune response, usually the production of antibodies. This is one of the reasons for those all important blood tests when you become pregnant. Receiving incompatible blood, for example, in a blood transfusion is extremely serious. It can lead to fever, jaundice, and ultimately clumping of the blood. So that was the blood. Remember to always use your book, check out your syllabus, and always listen to your teacher's guidance and past papers are always the key to revision. Best of luck. As always, the amazing professional looking icons are all from the Noun Project and are credited by the app automatically in the credits.